Welcome to your 2021 video horoscopes with me, Lada from Astrolada. Thank you so much for choosing me to be astrologer for you for the year 2021. And what can I say? Just a quick summary. I'm delighted to say that 2021 will be way easier than 2020. You remember 2020, if you saw the recorded, the, the videos that I created for 2020, I warned everyone this will be one of the toughest year ahead. For 2021, the action is moving from the cardinal signs like Aries, Capricorn, Cancer, and Libra, who had it the hardest, whether it was their ascendance on the moon in 2020, it's moving to the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, and Scorpio. And when I say action, it means they'll have life-changing events. They'll have something that takes them to the next level. But passing from one level to the other is always a bit more difficult. <laughs> Especially fixed signs, they don't like changes so much. But again, it will be, again, I promise 2020, 2021 will be way easier generally for the world and every each one of us. Just a few people will be... <clears throat> A little bit more tested and 2021 is when a new age for humanity starts generally speaking this is when saturn and jupiter start their new cycle for the first time in almost 800 years in an air sign i mean they kick start this 200 year period they met in the 80s in an air sign but the last time they met in aquarius was 1226 something like that 800 years ago <laughs> so we will start a brand new life brand new era for humanity you can check out my video which is for free on youtube um, about the year 2021 for the whole world there is new hope aquarius uh, energy is coming in there is a new hope for humanity new future life will start splitting into uh, society will start splitting into not in a bad way but in a way that instead of fighting and not seeing eye to eye it will separate somehow there will be people that want to live alternatively and people that want to follow the normal rules but anyway let's get back to you because those horoscopes are specific for you uh, so let me tell you what you need for those horoscopes in order to work for you. You need to find out your sun, moon and ascendant signs. I want you to check all, all three of them if you don't, if you can't afford to buy all three, just listen to your ascendant sign at least. But you need to know your time of birth to listen to the ascendant sign. And you need to know the degree as well. And if you have time to watch all three videos, the ascendant sun and moon, then listen to the specific degrees when I speak about the moon and the sun especially. For the ascendant, pay attention to everything, the houses, whatever, for the sun and moon, uh, especially pay attention if I mention your specific day of birth, if it's the sun or the degree of the moon as well. The houses can also be relevant. Who will be affected most? Everyone feels affected by the ascendant sign, but you need to be very correct with your time of birth. Like if your mom told you between two and three o'clock, no, it's like you need 234 you know, for example, PM. Uh, and within two, three minutes at least to have your correct time or five at most. So listen to your ascendant sign and the degree, start with it. Then listen to your sun sign. And of course, with the sun sign, you just know which day you're born, but you can check the degree as well. Listen to your moon sign. If you're born during the day, which means before the sunset, while the sun was above the horizon, the sun sign is very important for you because the sun becomes your ruling light. If you're born at night, like I am, when the sun has set, you know, you have to find out what day the sun set on the day you were born. And rose, so you know, you know, when you know your time of birth, you know, whether it was day or night. So if you're born at night, the moon, it will be very important for you because the moon becomes your queen, the light. So, uh, but I would advise, listen to three of those, ascendant, sun, and moon. Uh, if you're a woman, the moon sign is usually very important. If you're a man, the sun sign is usually very important. If you're a woman in a competitive career or who has her own business or who is very much into her career, the sun sign becomes very important because the sun sign is our goals, is our masculine side, taking decisions. 
Let me say, tell you what the difference, the subtle differences between listening to your ascendant sun and moon is. With the ascendant, it is the physical body and your fated events. They're kind of pre-recorded for you. Uh, you really see the ascendant sign in uh, when you, if, it's, if you have your correct time of birth, you would see it as uh, basically uh, as events that materialize, that are happen around you. And they've been already, usually they're like preset somehow. They're, they're set in stone. The ascendant is the most material aspect of the whole horoscope. Uh, it's kind of like our path, our destiny, whatever you want to say, the destiny of the soul. It's a little bit, we still have free will to some extent, but the ascendant is one of the most set ones. So you'd see very material manifestations uh, with the ascendant sign. With the moon sign, the moon is the soul and the feelings. So a lot of women, because women are more connected with their feelings, tend to actually resonate a lot with their moon sign and they're like yes those things for the ascendant sign are happening but what really where my whole heart is and when my whole attention has been and where my whole excitement has been and and my focus or pain or sadness whatever has been as per the moon sign prediction so do check it out while the sun sign is, and the moon sign is again the moon is connected to the past so it's a little bit more karmic it's something that has been maybe program for the soul before our birth type of thing. While the sun sign is the spirit, which where we have the most free will. And with the sun sign, people often resonate when they listen to their sun sign. They say, wow, it's all correct. Especially people, the more self-sufficient and independent you are, the more self, um, and how do I say, the more, uh, it's the sun is where we have the will, free will power. Uh, and this is where we can influence the sun sign prediction, the events, the most. And this is what usually our goals, our dreams are about. The sun is like this ideal of the spirit where you want to reach. Something that feeds your spirit, so to speak. So that's why a lot of people, especially in the West or in more, you know, where people have more free will generally in countries like that to determine uh, their life, to determine that direction in life. Because... You know, there are a lot of countries you cannot still do that. <laughs> Some countries are still set like a thousand years back, you know, in mentality. But where there is more free will, usually in the more developed countries, uh, <clears throat> or, you know, uh, and then the sun uh, is very powerful. People can feel the sun very powerful, especially people that, as I said, men feel the sun very strongly. Women who have their own goals, who have freedom to go after career and things like that. Uh, to create their own careers, and especially if you have a stellium of planets in the same sign as your sun. For example, I'm Aries sun, but I also have their Venus, Mercury, Mars. So then I would feel the prediction from the sun sign very, you know, very strongly. Maybe not as strongly as the ascendant, but it will be up there. Uh, and with the sun sign prediction, we have the most ability, when you listen to it, to take the higher road, to use our free will, to change things to the best manifestation possible. With the ascendant, with the moon, well, with the moon, if you can control your feelings, but it's harder to control your feelings. With the sun sign, if you can control your thoughts, it's easier to control your thoughts than your feelings. With the ascendant sign, it's kind of more like set. So I told you this, how do you find out what your sun, moon, and ascendant signs are? Uh, you can, let me share your screen with my screen with you you can go to my website astrolada.com you can find any other you know astrolada.com here it is you can find any other astrology website but i have this free birth chart calculator you can go there you can enter your details your name whatever it is your birth time let's say you're born okay maybe you're not eight years old but the minute you don't need the second very few people know the second your town i'll say new york continued so it's easier and here from the drop down menu you find out which new york it is let's say there might be new york in texas henderson okay let's say i was born there and this is what you get it might look like uh, alien <laughs> alien stuff to you but all you need to do is go here, planetary details. And I want you to take those first three, ascendant, sun, and moon. You see those three. 
and write the degree and the sign. So this person that I invented has the ascendant in Taurus at 24 degrees. Don't look at the second number, the second row. These are the seconds. So just round it up, 24 degrees Taurus. The sun is at 16 Aries. Usually everyone knows their sun sign. This is the, the sun sign is the same, you know, uh, every year at the same time. And this, the, moon per, the moon sign of this person is Libra at 8 degrees. Write those down. And if you hear when you're watching Libra, for example, we mentioned Libras born uh, with sun, moon, or ascendant from 3 to 9 degrees, they would feel this influence very strongly. Well, eight degrees is within that influence so pay attention what i'm talking about you're gonna feel especially when i give specific degrees or days if you're using for the moon it will be a degree and you hear your degree or that it's within the range pay attention to that you're gonna feel this big time the same with the sun sign but with the sun sign i also give the day you are born for example people that have degree at 16 areas they're born around the 4th or 5th of april you know every year is the same the ascendant i'll give the degrees again so if i say if you're born taurus if you for tauruses um who have uh, anything in degrees from say 12 to 26 and this person has a 24 degrees in taurus you will feel this influence and so on and so on if you don't see feel hear your degree just listen start with the ascendant sign the whole prediction for the ascendant sign will you know the houses then go through the sun sign if you're born during the day the moon sign second or a second if you're born at night especially if you're a woman and end with one of the three and listen to the three of them and see which one you resonate the most with. See which one makes the most sense for you. Watch it again in the middle of the year, towards the end of the year. And you will figure out which planet actually is very strong, but always the ascendant is so important, guys, if you know your time of birth. And because anyway, I cannot fully give you, um, I cannot give you specific reading uh, I just look at the whole sign, you know, the whole Taurus I'm going to be speaking or the whole Gemini. But there is a way for you to be following daily your personal transits like no one else in the world has them. It's again on the website, personal transit calendar. You go there, you register. I already have an account. 40, 50,000 people are using it, I think, already uh, for free. It's weekly, it's for free. But no one else, no one nowhere else in the world are you gonna and i show you how to use it here there is an instructional video how to use the transits but here you put your details you can put as many people as you want you're gonna get free for them or you can buy you know i uh, you can buy for a, a year transits or for a month transits a lot of the people that are subscribed uh, subscribe for a month at a time and you can just watch with your specific transits here they come out no one else in the world will have the same transits as you on the same time. Unless you have a twin born at the same place at the same time at the same minute as you. Otherwise, those transits will always be different. And you can go through each day of the year and see which transits you have. And you click and you read and that will, you know, you don't need my videos. But in those videos, what I strive to do, because a person has so many transits throughout the year. Look at that. This is just for one month so many transits how do you make sense of them in those yearly videos this is what i help you do especially if you watch them from for your ascendant you know to a lesser degree sun and moon but they're still relevant and i give you the bigger fuller picture like a like a, uh instead of like separate you know you have like for example look how many transits i'm currently having this day today and you know so oh which one you know but i give you like a summary of it like wrap it up all right um uh, there you go i think we're ready if you have written your sun moon or ascendant let's dive in but before that just a little quick prayer for god and uh, to bless the year 2021 and to protect anyone so Dear Father, Mother, Creators, dear Jesus, dear Mary, oh Buddha, uh, Allah, whoever, 
whoever has the higher power from whatever place they're praying in the world, turn towards your higher power, to the angels, to the exalted beings that are taking care of humanity, that are, helpless, that are selflessly helping us every day, our guardian angels, our departed beloved ones. Thank you so much for protecting us, for keeping us sane during the year 2020, for raising our consciousness collectively during that year. And I ask you for this new age that starts from the year 2021, from this, this brave new world. Let it be tilted towards the positive. Let the balance go towards the positive. Let more and more souls wake up to the divine love, to brotherhood, to peace. We're entering the age of Aquarius full speed from the beginning of 2021. May God, your desire and your plan for the world be fulfilled through each one of us. May brotherhood, love, equality, fraternity come, compassion between each other rather than separation. And let everyone who is watching this video find out the most important information for them, reach their heart, reach their soul, let them connect with the information that is most relevant for them and let them be prepared and help them through the path and help me be a good channel and a good, good channeler of your wisdom, of your knowledge so I can connect the people with the right, with the right inspiration. Amen. All right, let's start. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Aquarius, our time has come. For the first time in history since you've been alive on this earth in this incarnation, is are you going to be called? And are you going, you're going to be called to your biggest mission? You're going to be given special attention from the universe. Your energies are going to be mobilized for a way bigger mission than your own life. Because the biggest event this year is the Saturn Jupiter stay in Aquarius. Actually, already from the end of uh, 2020, in December, Saturn and Jupiter will join in our sign in Aquarius. I am one of the representatives of Aquarius, so I'm extremely excited to do this forecast for us. It's not going to be easy. But this is our call to arms from the universe. This is when our sleeping genes and missions is being activated and there is no going back because Aquarius will be playing a pivotal role for humanity in the next 20 years, actually in the next 2000 years because we're entering the age of Aquarius. But this is the first fanfares, the first clarion call for <laughs> action to mobilize your mission in life. And why is this so big? There has not been a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction and these are the social planets that determine the trends in the whole human uh, development. They determine the historical, the political, the cultural, the artistic, uh, the financial trends in the world. And they have not been together since the year 1400, 1401 or something like that. So since the Renaissance, the last time they were together, what happened? The Renaissance happened, the awakening of humanity to their self, to their rights, to their value of the individual human person. And 700 years ago, almost, you know, 600 more, seven almost, 100 years ago, this is when it last happened. And now it's happening for the first time again in our lifetime for sure. And it's also, last time it happened, it was in the age of Pisces. So it didn't have as much power. This time we are on the dawn of Pisces, the age of Aquarius. So Saturn and Jupiter joining in Aquarius and we're in the age of Aquarius. It's like triple power, double power. So everyone that has strong Aquarius in their life, Sun, Moon or Ascendant, this is the time when you have to be plugged into... Um, into the electric force, so to speak. It's very Aquarian term, electric force, the electric grid, the divine grid to fulfill a very important role on life, on earth. 
for the next 20 years during the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction period. It's 20 years. It gives the direction and the trends for the next 20 years, especially potent in the first 10 years. So something that we are going to do in our lives as an Aquarius rising or sun or moon over the year 2021 is going to give results, lasting results, and is going to impact the direction of your life for the next 20 years. And the role that you're going to play historically or in society, in the world, is going to be quite considerable for many of you. Doesn't matter the age. I mean, it's you'll be part of the people that are awakening the consciousness of others and aligning the consciousness of the rest of humanity with the evolutionary goals of the current age, with the vibration and the consciousness we need to rise. Whether you do it on a small level with your close people, or a lot of you might be doing on a big collective level with a big audience, with large groups of associations, but you will be the ones that are playing this pivotal role. You'll be the ones that are helping others align to the imperative needs of the current age, which are Aquarian, brotherhood, human rights, uh, interconnected networks of society and connection with uh, one another, helping each other from the bottom up and creating society rather than being ruled from the top up. This is the end of this kind of starting from this year. Gradually, you'll see over the next 20 years that this kind of um, hierarchical control of humanity starts dissolving. And what will emerge is a bottom down towards up um, self-regulation of humanity and society. This is the Aquarian energy. Uh, till now was the earth energy that was ruling us for 250 years, which is the industrial capitalism, uh, which dictates what's happening from above and is very hierarchical. Uh, but now we're going to come into this Aquarius. Everyone is as important as everyone else. This is the Aquarius energy. It's like a system where every cog of the system is as important as uh, the rest of the system. So you're going to help humanity imbue those principles of um, human rights, of equality, of uh, equal access to uh, an equal distribution of resources. Aquarius is the sign of equal distribution, distributive systems. Each one of you will do it in their own way, through their own specific careers. Doesn't matter if you're a gardener or if you're economic analysts, you know, uh, you'll do it in your own way that you create systems in some way, this is the Aquarius energy, create some kind of system, some kind of network, some kind of community of people with common interest uh, that proclaims and that works with those Aquarian energies of equal distribution, of fairness, of more uh, human rights, of uh, uh, coordi well-coordinated groups that self-regulate themselves rather than someone telling them from above, you're going to do this and this and this. So guys, w it's on our shoulders to bring this consciousness to others. Whether you are 15 years old or 70 years old, but you have Aquarius energy, you've always felt and you know that this is the right way. And you're doing it just by existing. You'll be doing it for the next... 20 years just by being you, carrying those energies. And because Saturn and Jupiter are joining in your our sign, whether it's your ascendant, if it's your sun or moon, it shows some kind of the first house, especially from ascendant, you know, the first house, the house of the ascendant, as we call it, or the sign of the sun or even the moon. It means you're going to play some leadership role, some kind of a, a role model, like put there, like 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 the universe takes the Aquarius people now and puts them there on the window shop as our example to others. So whatever you do, even even if you don't have grand ideas to you know to be teacher to thousands of people or to do something huge, you will just by your existence, by being who you are, take some kind of leadership role, take some kind of a role of. Um, to showing the rest of humanity how to live in the current ages, how not only to live, but to thrive. And no one is better adapted to this new world order, this new world consciousness that is coming than you, than us.
people with Aquarius rising, sun or moon. But we're tapped into that energy. So I predict that a lot of Aquarius will thrive better than any other people, no matter if your sun says in Capricorn and your moon is saying Gemini, but if you have Aquarius rising or Aquarius moon or whatever, you will be way more aligned to what is required from us to progress as humanity, as society, as human beings. Not only in the next 20 years, but in the next 2000 years. And you'll be the ones that align to what is necessary. Uh, the fastest as everyone. So you'll be the trendsetters starting from 2021. Maybe you won't immediately see your mission and what it is, but you'll do the first step. Some of you might take some course. Some of you might travel someplace. Some of you might get an idea. Some of you might meet someone that puts those seeds that are going to grow for the next 10 years, especially very strongly, but it's 20 years influence that something will happen in 2021, already from the end of 2021, Saturn and Jupiter meet in December, but let's say 2021, that will put you on this path. Don't underestimate small events because these small events can snowball into an avalanche of huge events down the line. It might be someone that you meet that tells you about, you know, uh, a, a course of study or a job or whatever, but something that you that you initiate and that you start in the year 2021 and even into 2022 will uh, open for you new horizons and will define your role in community in society and in your mission in life for many years ahead and as i said i think many aquarius will have leadership rule of some sort uh, leadership become kind of like an institution and a paradigm and an example of of how to progress with, with the changing energy of how to thrive in those times. It's like you're going to have the, your pulse, your hand, your fingers on the pulse of social trends. You'll be the ones that, you know, till now, for thousands of years, Aquarians were always called, you know, weird, quirky, um, outsiders, uh, outliers. We always kind of stood on the... Um, uh, let's say, <laughs> on the verge of being considered a bit crazy or too unconventional, too ahead of our time, or just kind of a bit misunderstood even. But now is the time when Aquarians are going to be recognized as uh, the prophets, <laughs> let's say, as the visionaries. And we've always been visionaries. Aquarius has this quality of, uh, you know, of, of, of a visionary. And uh, of genius. <laughs> of course, the Aquarius that are just simply perverted. <laughs> That's the other extreme of Aquarius. <laughs> but <laughs> let's say we're geniuses, not <laughs> perverted. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, and oh, well, I I'm excited, you know. And it's not going to be easy. You know, when you're a pioneer, when you're laying new foundations, when you're trying to, you know, go against the current and, and to... Uh, basically, we're going with the cosmic current, but going against the currents of, of what humanity is used to till now, of what humanity, um, the, the lifestyle, the, the way of being ruled is used to. Well, when we go against that, being a pioneer is a tough thing. Being blazing trails, as they call it, is the toughest thing, you know, just like a bicycle who rides first on the, you know, on a bicycle competition, he breaks the wind. So that's what expected from us. So we're going to have one of the toughest jobs in our lives for the next two years while well, Saturn is in our sign. But what you build on the foundation of that is going to determine and it's going to lay strong, let's say, let's hope that we're going to build very strong rock foundations rather than build our uh our future in the next two years on sand <laughs> but it's going to determine your life for many years ahead and i think it's going to influence many people around you because aquarius is the sign that is uh, that can have the ability to influence the largest groups of people uh, and the world view and the perceptions of others as well because aquarius is the sign that comes with the newest ideas it comes with the um, most progressive uh, and uh, and ideas that are socially uh, beneficial for the majority 
rather than from a selfish perspective. And there is no more place for selfishness. How, huma how according to astrological influences, you know, we can no longer just uh, go for the resources and live as, as if the resources are, you know, selfishly. This was the earth sign that it, it's great. We, during the earth, the last 200 years of earth sign, Saturn, Jupiter conjunctions, we developed the ability to master the earth, master the material reality around us through mechanical science and whatever. But now it's time for the quantum reality. Now it's time for uh, everyone taking the responsibility in society and not selfishly grabbing for themselves, but um, finding new resources and so on. Doesn't matter. Some of you will just be those uh, through energy, through new ideas, uh, through inventing new softwares, new businesses, whatever it is, whatever rocks your boat, whatever makes you excited, you will show the path to others how to do it in line with the current energies. So with that introduction, I hope I got you excited and interested, but I'm also warning you it's going to be tough work. Building foundations is tough work. It's like giving birth. Transits of Saturn through the first house is con compared always to labor in astrology. And if you're a woman, if you've given birth, you know, you've never been through more pain in your life. But you see, I want you to keep in mind the vision. And you're great at keeping a vision ahead. The future forward-looking Aquarians, we have the skill. Rather than get bogged down in the difficulties and the hard work that we have to do, rather than get... Uh, discouraged and overwhelmed with, you know, when you're trying to make a new path, a new direction to be a pioneer, you find a lot of resistance. Resistance within yourself, doubting yourself, and external resistance from the world that you're trying to change. And I don't want you to forget that and, and, and to get lost in, in the difficulties that are ahead. I want you to keep the vision in mind where you're headed. And that you're going to play a leadership position in the world in some way because of what you're doing now. On a more personal level, Saturn and Jupiter transiting your sign, our sign, <laughs> indicates it's time for a new chapter in our life. Let's not talk anymore collectively. Let's talk about very, because we're humans, we're interested, you know, about our own life. Well, keep in perspective, the big picture that I talked about, but it starts with working on yourself. And the first house is focus on yourself. If till now, till now we had it very hard for a couple of years. Why is that? Because Saturn and Jupiter were in our 12th house for, for the whole 2020, Pluto there as well. And uh, and Saturn went into our 12th house from 2000, I felt it from 2018 already. So most Aquarians had Saturn and Jupiter, not most, all Aquarians, especially Aquarius rising. But the Sun and the Moon as well, it's known as a tough period when Saturn is transiting the sign before our sign, the sign of our sign, and the sign after our sign. It's about a seven-year period, uh, especially hard is the first part, the, two, the first two and a half years when you're completing, when you're ending a 30-year cycle in your life. What happens when you're ending a 30-year cycle? Well, you pay karma. Uh, you might feel stuck because you want to move forward and start something new. But only happens when Saturn and Jupiter move in our first house from 2021. But till now, they were in the 12th house. So you have a vision maybe some of you had and you wanted to start something new. But outside circumstances, it's uh, beyond your control, which is the 12th house. Things that you can't really control, even almost like invisible circumstances, were putting like a rod in your uh, wheels <laughs> and uh, either delays or blockages and you're like, I don't know, I'm trying everything and you might get frustrated because Aquarius is very a sign that wants to be active, that wants achievements, that wants, it's very goal oriented and result oriented sign. So it can feel frustrating. It felt frustrating for many Aquarius rising and sun and moon people that I know. Uh, with the moon is more emotional frustration uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely frustration that kind of like, I feel stuck. And a lot of them 
they knew like something new have to happen, but they didn't even have an idea. 12th house is the house of confusion. And when Saturn and Jupiter were there, we're like, it's like, I'm ready for something new, but what is it? I, I don't know what it is. It's like trying to figure it out. Some of you got ideas already where you want to head, but they could not manifest it yet. Well, Saturn and Jupiter were in our 12th house. They, maybe what you could have done is start preparation, research and study. That's what happened to me. I got a brilliant idea two years ago. And since then, I thought I'd make it happen in one year. And I'm an astrologer. And I, I was like, no, it's not going to happen before Saturn and Jupiter enter my first house. So I was like, okay, I'll give myself two years. And to be honest, that's why I didn't stress out because everyone that I was employing, like 20 software developers and stuff, they said, oh, we'll be ready in three months. Two years later, <laughs> still, you know, I'm waiting for them to complete it. So I'm like, okay, 12 house transits, things get delayed, things get outside circumstances, you know, but I've been preparing, I've been working, I've been doing all those things behind the scenes and still no result, but it's in the working. So some of you maybe did the same. They've been preparing, they've been studying in depth. They've been going within, um, trying to get the inspiration. And when Saturn and Jupiter enter our first house, manifestation time, baby, you know, not going to be easy. It's going to be the hard work, but finally you're going to start seeing something. <laughs> finally, the first digs of the construction or the idea you've been planning. So a new chapter in your life. No, not a new chapter. I love this expression, a new book. You're closing one book. You're starting another book. 2021, 20, 22. That's when you're <laughs> starting to write it. And um, you finally start feeling when Saturn and Jupiter come about out of the 12th house, like you have more conscious control and say in what's happening around you. Till now, it's like you could not control events. You might have felt like you're putting efforts and it's going to the, like thrown into the wind. Or you might have feel like no matter how much you plan and strategize, something out of, <laughs> out of circumstances, this year was coronavirus, whatever, <laughs> um, out of circumstances were just uh, making things happen in a different way. You didn't have much of a free will, of a con of a uh, ability to influence events in the direction you want. This is when 12th house is activated because it was time to focus within. This is what the lessons for the last two years, especially 2020 was about with Saturn and Jupiter in our 12th house. Go within, um, almost like conserve your energy, rest more if you can, <laughs> which has been hard with Saturn in the 12th. It's always tends to give some sleep problems as well. Uh, but going within, self-analyzing yourself, a lot of Aquarians that I know even did psychology research uh, into, uh, it's like, recapit like a recapitulation of their previous life, the last 30 years, they were digging, uh, you know, because 12 houses to wrap up something, to complete, and to, to basically to pull, to draw the line on the ledger and make the calculations, so... What is, what do I need to keep? What do I need to let go? So a lot of times people go through a lot of losses. They let go of a lot of things when planets transit the 12th house. And that happened to a lot of us. Maybe a lifestyle, a confused identity, confused um, uh, 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 attachment to a certain identity, attachment to a certain... Uh, career or whatever, so or, or relationships, people complete and they end things when Saturn and Jupiter in the 12th house and hopefully develop some kind of a spiritual attachment and spiritually raise their consciousness into because spiritual um, growth only happens when you develop attachment from material identities, from identification with anything basically. So we lost, we shed a lot of weight, let's say, psychic weight when Saturn and Jupiter transiting in this 12th house. So some of you might have felt like material and physical loss of some sort as well. Losses happen. Uh, big endings happen when Saturn and Jupiter transits the, fourth, the 12th house. But some of you were able to shed a lot of karmic um, burden and a lot of uh, old patterns. So that was one of the biggest 
gains we got from Saturn and Jupiter in the 12th house, even though it meant like leaving things behind, but 12th house is self-sabotaging behaviors based on past lifetimes experiences or based on uh, memories we've buried from childhood or whatever in the subconscious. And Saturn and Jupiter and Pluto there have been helping us bring those to the surface and release them, recognize those subconscious patterns and work meticulously met over and over with repeated attempts to eliminate those. I know a lot of Aquarians that were able to stop harmful habits. And I'm not talking just physical addictions. I'm talking any kind. There might be mental addictions, mental harmful habits as well. And usually first they intensify when Saturn enters the 12th house. So the battle becomes real. The battle for the soul. The soul is the there. The 12th house is where it resides. So it becomes like the, it, you almost felt like you went through a battle of your soul uh, for the last two years. <laughs> and hopefully you started winning the battle tour, you know, by 2020, by the end of 2020. So hopefully some of you won it. But I personally, after years, I was able to stop drinking and uh, I was not a, uh, I was a binge drinker once a week, but two bottles of wine, huh? and that was definitely messing up with my progress, self-sabotaging behavior, escape from reality, 12th house, and Saturn passing there is that you have to correct those harmful ones. Other people have other self-sabotaging behaviors, you know, uh, for some it might be procrast procrastin procrastination, for others it might be very negative internal mental talk, but you are dealing with those issues. And as I said, it usually intensifies it at the beginning and because it makes it so unbearable, those those self-sabotaging behaviors, those inner fears, the 12th house is inner fears, uh, guilt from the past. Uh, it brings it, I, I don't know if it's a, a view, but I've been dreaming so many things about things that I've done wrong and things from my high school constantly, or people that wronged me or hurt me, I've been constantly dreaming them. 12th house is the dream world. And I've been just, every night, it's like I'm experiencing the same mistakes or the same uh, post, uh, moments I let others take advantage of me. And it's almost like it's been working itself out in your subconscious through your dreams. And because you're ending this chapter, you st have, you're starting on a clean slate from 2021. So those unresolved feelings they had to burn themselves up they had to just like purifying whatever you you start burning the drosses from the bottom of, of something and they come to the surface and you 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 have forgotten about those things it, they're somewhere at the bottom for years and now they came to the surface and maybe a lot of guilt a lot of uh, self-analysis came out of that a lot of feelings of fears and phobias you haven't felt for years my, my claustrophobia resurfaced after I haven't felt it for years and some panic attacks came. You know, for everyone has been something different on those lines. But the good thing is we've worked through that. We've burned it. A lot of karma, you know, karma, like seeing the results of our actions often happens with those 12 house transits. Well, we've, you know, we've paid. We've, everyone pays at the end. And you've paid through the piper, as they say. That's why Saturn transits the 12th house tends to be quite difficult because you're not allowed to move into the new future of the first house until you've resolved your old shit, <laughs> until you reconciled with yourself and until you healed. So on a deep level, Saturn Jupiter, despite of the emotional states it might have created, uh, sometimes even feelings of despair or depression in some extreme cases or pass passivity or feelings of stuck, you know, um, you've, and, and working with a psychologist as well, so working through deep psychological issues. Well, you've, you've done this work and now you can start on a new, you know, on a new page. And you know how always in books, in romances, and that's because this is the how life works is before a happy ending all the shit everything goes wrong <laughs> so often when saturn transits the 12th house like problems escalate that you haven't de dealt with, with before even problems of your consciousness and sometimes in extreme cases might, someone can feel even a bit mental if there are a lot of unresolved 
things from moral as well that they haven't dealt with. So they have to go through them and they can feel stuck in a loop. But okay, it's finished. It's finished from 2021. All those psychic attacks, all those, even there, some, for some people, they might have been dealing with hidden enemies and kind of um, slight attacks from others, from invisible enemies, you know, but it's finished. And uh, sometimes often mental health might have been affected. Some people might have had losses, material, financial, so it can teach them to detach. I personally didn't have any financial losses, just the opposite. But I had to detach from my biggest thing, which was attachment to uh, coping with reality through alcohol. Alcohol was, was my biggest happiness. You know, I would, I would just work like crazy for years. And every Friday and Saturday, it was my time. That was my only time I knew how to escape. And of course, that will wreak havoc with health, with hormones, with mental stability. I had to confront my biggest demon, my biggest fear. So that's what we were doing for, 12, uh, for, for the last couple of years. We were fighting with such things. Hopefully we eliminated them or got them under control, at least with Saturn. And now we can start on a new page. But now is the difficulty when Saturn and Jupiter enter the 12th house is, who am I? Who is this new me? <laughs> you know, I, okay, I close that chapter of 30 years, uh, almost. I'm starting, you know, I burned the karma. I don't know who I am now without this. Um, you lost some things, you let go of things when Saturn and Jupiter in the 12th house. Now you have to recreate and you rebuild yourself anew. That is a hard job. It's, you know, it's, uh, what can I say? That's what we have, but what a joyous opportunity. What a great opportunity to build a new you. Just, you're going to keep just the things that are relevant for you. And you're going to rediscover yourself or build a new self and your priorities. It's going to be very important. You're going to ask yourself some very difficult questions. What do I want to keep in my life moving forward? Whatever you keep in your life moving forward, it will stay with you for many years. And actually, even if you don't want to let go of something, when Saturn is transiting our first house, there is there's no choice, you know, kind of. If something is detrimental for you, if something is getting you stuck and blocked, Saturn with a scythe, Saturn is represented like death with scythe, it cuts off the dead parts. So while it was in the 12th house, it was preparing us to let go. But when it enters the first house, it's final. There is no coming back. Sometimes there are some, again, separations that happen, but it's almost like you're, 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 you're ready for it. I don't, you know, I've known a lot of people when Saturn transits their first house or send on the moon. They can go through divorces, complete long marriages, end careers and start new ones. Uh, relocate to the other end of the world, just something very new, very different. Start totally new lifestyles, but you're no longer gonna feel, you know, there might be certain separation and ending still, but you're not gonna feel in that stuck energy of the 12th house, things are ending, but nothing new is coming. And you're like, I don't understand why. Now, whatever it ends, it brings you something new. And you have the vision, you have more control over the new things that you bring into your life. Whatever has to go, it will go. <laughs> that you don't have control over. You can consciously say, you know, I don't want that. But now you have control. What new things do I bring into my life? So for the next two years, you have a rare opportunity to give direction to the events according to your, uh, according to your vision, according to your desire. That will determine for many, many years ahead your future. So let's delve a little bit. What does having Saturn and then Jupiter transit the first house mean? First together, in ancient astrology says that when Saturn and Jupiter, the two business planets, the two social planets, the two planets that determine our social role, uh, pass through the first house or through any sign, they manifest that house or the sign. So if it's your ascendant, it can manifest for you a new appearance, a new body. You know, if you always, if you haven't been paying attention to your health, if you haven't been paying attention to your appearance, to fitness, to the workings of your body, now you will, you, your focus will go there. You'd finally, for example, take time for yourself. You'd finally, uh, if you've been 
codependent till now on others, on circumstances. Now you, start, you become independent. You'd work on your independence. That's why I've seen many times, like, people when they're going, they've been married 20 years and then divorce and the first house is activated. They have to rediscover who they are and build, learn to rely on themselves and be independent. But oh, what strength it gives you in the long term. The confidence, first house is one of the houses of confidence. So you have to rebuild your confidence. That will be a long lasting confidence. But whenever Saturn and Jupiter are in the sign of the ascendant, they can manifest a new beginning, very powerful in your life. It might be business, it might be, um, I would say even relationship wise, a new, new vision for your life, new opportunities. Jupiter can bring new knowledge, new wisdom, new financial opportunities because Jupiter for Aquarius rules the two financial houses, resources and income gains and earnings and um, stored resources and how you invest them. So Jupiter, very fina uh, abundance bringing planet for Aquarius comes to us to bring us ideas in regards to that, to start some new beginning there. Uh, Saturn is Saturn is one of the rulers of Aquarius. Being in, in, in our first house is like the king is coming back to his kingdom. He's been roaming in faraway lands for a long time. He's been lost here in the 12th house, in the uh, kingdom of uh, illusions. He's been lost in a foggy realm <laughs> till now of monsters. And he finally has found, it's just like the Jew people, 40 years in the desert. Maybe that's how it felt in the last few years for some Aquarius. When are we going to get there? Well, the king is back. You have found the promised land. It's not going to be easy because you have now to build a new kingdom from start. The hard work is just starting, but you're no longer lost and despaired or with some restrictive circumstances because 12th house rules are prisons. So it might be mental prison, psychological, physical, stuck in, you know, even real prison is some sort of you know, hospitalization. Well, you're back and you're taking over. The king is here. So massive, massive changes. And manifestations are starting for Aquarius people. But I want to split Aquarius into groups. Because some Aquarius will be feeling mostly Saturn. And others Aquarius will be feeling mostly Jupiter this year. More strongly Jupiter and more strongly Saturn. The first batch of Aquarians that have mostly Saturn influence are those born from the beginning. From zero degrees till 14. So the first half. Zero to around 14 degrees in Aquarius which means from the 20th of January till the 3rd of February, approximately. Uh, 3rd, 4th of February. They're strongly influenced mostly by Saturn because Saturn goes over those degrees. And then in 2022, Saturn will go in the second, um, in the second part of Aquarius. So later born Aquarius after the 3rd of February or after 14, 15 degrees in Aquarius, uh, they will feel Saturn in 2022. So the really hard work comes for the first batch of Aquarians and actually the ability to take control of their life in their own hands because Saturn is about control. Saturn is about uh, building something, you know, and of course some difficulties, of, you know, uh, but they, they will strongly feel this self-control, the self-restraining influence of Saturn, ability to... Um, they would feel like they really need to prioritize and decide what is necessary to stay in their life, what has to be cut out of their life. They will restructure their life. If it's your Sunday, usually Saturn makes, at least like a reality check about your career, makes you take on extra responsibilities in regards to your career or worldly duties. There can be some um, challenges in regards to work or extra, too much work that sometimes overwhelms you. Uh, or it can even mean like you receive, if you've been working hard till now already, you receive some kind of a reward, but which comes with extra duties and responsibilities, maybe some kind of a promotion, some more authoritative role and role of an overseer of some sort, but which requires you to put on extra hours, for example. And the sun can symbolize males in your life, for example, father, husband. Uh, authority figures of some sort that they become very demanding on you or very kind of um, 
uh, structuring. Sometimes they can be even more judgmental and critical, but uh, because Saturn Aquarius, Saturn loves the sign Aquarius. So even if you feel extra pressure or stress from such figures in your life, um, uh, and uh, th th they have ultimately a good influence on you. Even if you might feel like you're being bullied or that you're being pressured into something, remember that those people that are playing the Saturn role in your life of, of demanding, of um, putting pressure on you, they're like a wise teacher sent from the universe above. Uh, sometimes it can mean that when Saturn transits the sun, that you really decide to uh, change career path and direction you're going towards, uh, into something more meaningful, into something that will, that you're willing to dedicate the next 30 years of your life to hard work, you know. You're not going to waste this kind of energy and efforts on a career or life path which is not uh, which is, doesn't feel essential to you. That's why cutting away certain unnecessary things happens during that time. Saturn transiting the sun wants to streamline your goals, but it comes by you have to follow the rules. Saturn demands that you follow the rules, that you do everything legally, that you don't try to rush too fast. You can feel that, especially at times when Saturn goes retrograde that year. You know, I think it happens from... Uh, May and um, uh, something like that, uh, from May till September, approximately. Uh, you have to remember that when it goes retrograde, that you don't, you know, that you don't get, things will slow down a little bit. You feel like it's three times more hard work than you expected. Don't despair. You're building this new, you know, this new life for yourself. If it's your ascendant sign from zero to 14 degrees, uh, it, it, and again, it can mean like you want to reconstruct an, a new body, <laughs> you know, you can start working out physically and with the sun as well. I mean, for the sun and moon and the ascendant, all of those things, uh, all of those things can happen. You have to put more attention on yourself with the ascendant to forge your own path to develop independence and self-reliance, to find out who you are. You might even look a little bit egoistical and self-absorbed at moments, but that's what is necessary. This birthing process requires all your concentration and efforts. Um, some of you, you know, Saturn transiting the, those degrees of ascendant, it can even mean changing your life to live in a different place, everything, all of those things. And they might be a little bit of an isolation influence. And we've had isolation enough already with Saturn in the 12th house, but when it transits the first house, it's now more it's like you willingly want to do that because you need all those energy to focus on building this new path in yourself rather than disperse them at, at kind of random social activities, you know, or wasting your time. Definitely the sense of time is sticking out comes very strong when Saturn transits Sun, Moon or Ascendant. It's like your realization of getting old and that you don't have time to waste on superficial things, on superficial lifestyles. Um, so you can, others might feel if your Sun, Moon or Ascendant is those 15, first 15 degrees that you're a bit more somber, you know, a little bit more sober, <laughs> a little bit more, uh, it's like you're chipping away the unnecessary and a bit more withdrawn as well. Or maybe that you're too serious, um, that you're too hard on yourself. Definitely you feel you're hard on yourself, but that's what necessary to build this new self. You know, it's not going to last forever. Don't worry, guys. After that, when Saturn moves out of your sign, and even from 2022, when it goes into later degrees, you'd be like, Whew, okay, I've done a hard work. Now I can relax a little bit and start seeing the results of that work. So uh, just be prepared mentally what it demands so it, it doesn't feel so, you know, overwhelming while it's happening. It's just a temporary period. Uh, <clears throat> You have to make some hard choices, but I think they'll be very wise choices because Saturn is in its own sign, so it tends to give the best results usually. Especially Saturn is happiest in Aquarius. 
um, you can start working on some long-term goals when Saturn transits on Moon or Ascendant uh, that might take a bit of time before they give full results. But just be patient. You are doing the right thing. So arm yourself with the word patience and constructive positivism for the future because you are working on something, because you are doing the right things, even if it takes longer to feel happier, to see the results and so on. When Saturn transits Sun, Moon or Sun, then you can feel a bit of a constriction uh, uh, in, in regards to your first house rules action to move freely. You can feel a little bit of a restriction there. Usually it's self-imposed restriction because Saturn rules you. So it means you would impose this restriction on yourself. Hopefully for most of us, this is the case. Because you're working again on some long-term goal on, on a new beginning in your life. So of course it means you're going to restrain yourself from certain things. So some, some of you, the long-term goal might be a healthier body. So it means self-restriction to, you know, to the body. But sometimes Saturn can give stiffening because it's a cold planet that stiffens. You can feel your hands colder. You can feel like uh, that your joints are stiffening. You can feel that, uh, uh, you know, certain, um, that, that everything is moving a bit slower in your body. <laughs> and again, it's a big call to change something about your lifestyle, your met metabolism, to pay attention to your health and to do constructive choices and kind of Saturn is about depriving yourself of something, you know, for the greater, for the longer goodness of your health and uh, uh, goals as well. You, if you willingly restrict yourself because of those long-term goals, it's not going to be imposed on you from outside. But if you're trying to run from responsibilities, if you're trying to live as bohemianly, uh, as bohemian and irresponsible, or just like without uh, digging deep and taking those self, uh, how do I say, like uh, without doing the hard work, you can be forced in such situations. A forced maturation, let's say. <laughs> but ultimately, the goal of Saturn is to mature you and to learn that you can't get something for nothing. And the things that you built during Saturn periods, which require your personal effort, nothing falls in your lap. Yes, opportunity will come because Jupiter also passes from the first 15 degrees. But uh, even if you have to, whatever you build, it's long lasting. Remember that. It's not going to be taken from you tomorrow. And it's the most rewarding. The, the things you achieve during Saturn periods, they feel the hardest, but they're the most rewarding long term. So keep that in mind and that will help you. Um, something that is very useful on Saturn transits is a healthy regimen. It's like restrict, start working out because Saturn can... Uh, when transits the ascendant or the moon or the sun even, it can uh, diminish the muscles, uh, weaken the body sometimes. It can diminish the absorption of nutrients. So, uh, and people become very aware of their body then. So the important thing is to focus consciously and to do the right choices with supplements, with more sunshine, because Saturn is the opposite of the sun. Saturn uh, makes you colder, Saturn makes you stiffer, makes you feel older sometimes when it transits on, especially the ascendant. A person might start feeling first grain hairs. For some women, it might be menopause time. For other, or, or they just start to, to realize, even if you're in your 20s, you start realizing that time is ticking out, out ages. You know, I have to do something to preserve, to conserve, to take care uh, and to be more responsible to, to some area of my life, especially with the ascendant, the body, the health. So it's very good if you take some uh, exercise, like muscle building exercise. And Saturn allows you to be very consistent and you shouldn't do too much. Saturn's strategy for success is a little bit every day, but consistently. You're not running a sprint with Saturn, you're running a marathon uh, and you sh shouldn't hurry. So every day, even if it's every day, 10 minutes walk or 20 minutes lifting weights or 10, 20 minutes working on a book or working on some business plan, something new that you are giving birth to. But be consistent every day. And little by little, you, 
within a year or two, you get to the final point without stressing yourself too much, you know. <clears throat> All right. Um, and if it's your moon there in Aquarius in the first 15 degrees, sometimes Saturn can bring some extra heavy responsibilities with parenthood, with mother figures, some difficult situations in family, uh, some karmic relationships as well. Moon is emotional bonding that have to be solved with maybe, uh, you, you see a lot of presence of elderly people around you, even with the sun, moon and ascendant, the first 15 degrees, like older people, more experienced people, more authorities, or it might be just, you have, to, you know, it might be like having to, take care of an elderly person sometimes that's it <clears throat> um and you'd also a lot of people lose weight when saturn transits the ascendant their sun and moon as well they're able to reduce and especially if they do it consciously you know rather than by malabsorption of nutrition <laughs> you know if you do it with exercise and the right uh, routines daily again not like don't go running two hours a day it's a little by little don't put too much pressure on your body saturn is a little bit every day but consistently you'll see long lasting results if you transform your body now you change it you're gonna stay like that for the next 30 years probably okay <laughs> maybe not 30 but for many years ahead <clears throat> Um, another thing is get more sun to counteract sometimes the more morose and negative feeling of Saturn because we can feel like, oh, all I do is work or it's just like I'm stuck in this routine is every day, you know, or it's just too many responsibilities and, uh, you know, uh, I'm maturing, growing up. It's what counteracts it is consciously trying to have more fun, leaving time for that and the sunlight. Saturn is cold, the sun is warm. Try and get as much sunlight as possible. No creams and stuff like that. You know, I can tell you sun creams, I've never used sunscreens and I sunbathe all summer long and look at my skin. So it's okay. okay some of you say, oh no, cancer, whatever. Actually, statistically, the more sunscreen you use, the more possible you can get cancer. But that's another thing. I have my alternative views <laughs> and I live by that. So anyway, so take more sun. Sun is the biggest friend of um, humans and especially we need it more as Aquarius. Now, otherwise it becomes too frosty with Saturn around our sign, too somber. <laughs> okay. And uh, the, the second patch, but again, those early Aquarians, they're doing the hard work, but they're doing something very solid, very enduring. Um, and um, they'll be able to relax from the end of the year. Uh, <clears throat> and if it's your moon, I was saying emotionally you can feel down. That's the hard thing with the moon. You can feel like overwhelmed, like pressure on you. Uh, sometimes the moon rules the health and the hormones in females or responsibilities for parenting or family. There can be the need to change place of living, for example, when Saturn transits the sun, em change of emotional connections that feel a little bit more karmic, for example. There's some restriction or there's some condition there. But again, because Saturn is transiting its own sign, uh, relationships started during Saturn transiting mood usually tend to last long. Uh, they have like a structuring, organizing influence on you. Uh, with the moon, trans trans transiting the moon, it can mean you can build a house first. That's another thing that can happen. Okay. And then the second batch of Aquarius, they're born, they're going to feel only Jupiter. And uh, basically from 15 to 30 degrees in Aquarius, but especially from 20 to 30 degrees. So the later bond, the last 10 degrees of Aquarius from especially 20 to 30 degrees because Jupiter will pass over those degrees three times. Once forward, once backwards, once forward. So actually they're going to have a very different experience than the first batch of Saturn. It's way more Jupiterian. They're basically born from the 11th or 10th or 9th of February approximately till the end of Aquarius sign. So till the 19th of February. So they are going to have a lot of opportunities that come to them. With Saturn transiting, also you get opportunities, but you have to work hard on them. And, uh, but with Jupiter, they come easy to you. 
you know it's like you feel like whoo this the second batch of Aquarians you'd feel optimistic you'd feel natural high you'd feel like wanting to grab from life and life will give you you'll be at the right place at the right time even without making too much effort you'd receive and uh, especially financially, materially, because Jupiter rules second house, 11th house, it can bring uh, support to you through social networks, expand your financial opportunities from social networks like the 11th house. Uh, it can bring new uh, contacts, uh, new visions of the future. It can bring uh, opportunities to travel. Jupiter drinks rules traveling. Let's hope they don't close the world again. But you'll feel more free than other Aquarians. You'd feel more... Uh, opportunities to study something, wisdom, knowledge, uh, especially things connected to economy, to finances, to systems, to wealth, because Jupiter rules the 11th house, to social connections, to markets, um, to abundance, so in, improved self-worth and self-value, more confidence, definitely. If it's your son in those degrees, a career, you can get like a big promotion without the extra responsibility, reward, expansion of your business, uh, some auspicious male figure that appears in your life, boyfriend, husband, uh, that things are going great for them or their source of inspiration and growth and opening your eyes to new opportunities. A lot of you might feel so inspired to higher knowledge or might, if you are those later degrees, you know, you can be put in the role of a teacher. You can have successful teaching uh, or knowledge spreading opportunities as well. Financial and, and uh, higher wisdom, higher knowledge, uh, all those lovely things. Uh, Law of attraction will work for you now. <laughs> you know, wanting something, visualizing it, and it comes to you. And you have a clear vision about where you want to head. But the second, and th those opportunities that come to you, the first, you know, the sec those who are born from around the 20th to the 30th of, um, uh, degree, 20th to the 30th degrees of Aquarius, uh, those opportunities that come to you now, grab them, you know, uh, and Saturn next year, 2022, will influence you. So you'll have an opportunity to consolidate them, to do the hard work on them, to restructure them, to fix something on them, then to solidify those opportunities. But it will be more testing 2022 for you. Um, let's say not more testing. Let's use a different word more demanding. Uh, it will put more responsibilities on you. It will require more focused, concentrated energy. Uh, it will go slower, but 2022 for the second badge of Aquarius goes fast and with opportunities. And, you know, if it's your moon there from 20 to, to, to 30 degrees in Aquarius, they can be... Uh, easy pregnancy, they can be a new home, they can be a sense of joy emotionally, some good emotional connections that are happy and positive. Um, depends what house your moon is in. If it's in the sixth house, it might be even a new career. If it's in the eleventh house, it can be a new social tribe that brings you those opportunities, you know. Uh, and if it's your uh, ascendant, Everything in life was an opportunity. <laughs> oh, everything that we talked about. Okay, uh, so new direction, but it comes easy, flows, expansion. Ah, those second Aquarians can put on weight <laughs> because their world is expanding their vision. Sometimes the body responds to that or they can just have more abundance of energy and so on. Um, all right, so that's a lot <laughs> that we said. It's exciting times, Aquarians. One, some Aquarians will have to study, expand their knowledge and faith and vision, the Jupiter ones that they're having. Others, the Saturn ones, are already starting to do, you know, to dig, to do the plan, to, to build. You know, they're starting to build. Um, Okay, so now let's look at the rich, uh, at Rahu and Ketu. Rahu and Ketu change their sign positions every 18 months, so every year and a half. So from the middle of 2020 till the end of 2021, they will be uh, in your 5th and 11th houses. They're always opposite each other. So some of you already are feeling this. 
you know, it started from June 2020 till the end of 2021. Wherever Rahu is, this is where we want to, it, its influence is like Jupiter and Venus. We, we receive materially there, we manifest, we become passionate and excited. Uh, we can expand there, magnify, manifest this house. So it's been transiting and it will stay the whole 2021 in our fifth house for all Aquarians. What does it mean? This means that you become passionate and excited. You're becoming about, and the fifth house is a self house again, just like the first house. It's a house of self-expression, of creativity, of what you find enjoyable, what you find fun. So you, you're really gonna have more fun first, first of all. So that's a good news for the Saturn influence Aquarians who think it's only just going to be hard work. No, because the North Node is in your fifth house of fun. So you're going to learn ways to express yourself creatively. New ways, which means new hobbies. You discover new talents. You're discovering, um, all of us Aquarians are discovering new talents we were not aware of, new hobbies, new passions, new ways to enjoy life. The fifth house is the house where there is flow, where there is, you know, like an artist, when they're drawing, they lose time. They, they, it's like they think they've been drawing for an hour, it's been 12 hours, they forget to eat. Or a child that is playing, my, forgets to eat, it's all focused, being present in the moment. What spiritual yogis talk about, to be so conscious and present in the moment, this is the fifth house. Like children are constantly, when they play, when they do something, they enjoy, their souls absorbed in it. And that's when the divine um, inspiration flows through us. You're, you're in the flow. And that's perfect for manifestation again when you're in the flow. And Rahu is helping you that. So you discover things that are helping you be in the flow, that are helping you be present, that are helping you be alive and excited like a child. And I can tell you, finally, I'm starting to feel that, you know, I'm, I'm discovering moments of joy that I've, forgotten and fifth house rules spiritual practices actually and spiritual practices goal is exactly that children naturally get that state but we as grown-ups we detach from the child we get disconnected from the being present in the moment so spiritual practices are given to us like meditation mindfulness nature that allows to be present in the moment and feel the joy like a child to get excited as a child and another way to do it is through hobbies and things we're passionate about. Uh, so you don't even have to do meditations and things like that. Some of you might get very excited and passionate about practicing and trying different spiritual things like mindfulness and stuff like that. But others, they'll just discover things they're so excited and passionate about. Uh, I don't know, it might be knitting, it might be reading. I'm rediscovering so many passions again. Ah. Oh. I'm starting to feel glimpses of joy that I haven't felt in a long time. I'm enjoying playing with my children, fifth house rules, children. Rahu transiting there can make you more passionate about spending time with children, about their education, about raising their skills, bringing them new skills, you know. It can also mean that your firstborn has a sudden rise in life, for example, or some renewal process happening there. Um, fifth house is romance as well. What else makes us feel like we're losing time and like we're in the flow when you're in love? For some of you, it means falling in love, guys. And usually the people we fall in love with when Rahu trans is the fifth house, especially from Ascendant or from the moon, not so much from the sun. From the sun is more like you'd have like more creative intelligence to use in your career, to fulfill your goals because yeah, the other meaning of the fifth house is creative intelligence. Um, creative ideas that come to you. But from the Ascendant and Moon, often Rahu trusting the fifth can bring a romantic interest that is foreign, that is very different than you, that is kind of taboo breaking, maybe someone from a different religion or race, or someone that is kind of, uh, it makes you excited, someone passionate. Rahu has those qualities. Uh, someone very charismatic as well. Um, and sometimes Rahu transiting the fifth house can indicate interest in someone, romantic interest in someone forbidden. I'm not going to tell you what that means. You you know what someone forbidden might mean. <laughs> but it excites you again. You want to fall in love. You're willing to 
fall in love, to get fascinated. And falling in love can mean falling in love with life, falling in love with yourself again, liking who you are, building new confidence. Fifth house is another house of confidence because of discovering new talents, because of learning to enjoy yourself and feel you know, excited about life when you fall in love again because you, it stimulates your intelligence there and you actually quite crave a, applause and attention. You'd willingly put yourself in center stage roles. If you're afraid to do public speaking, you might do it now. Anything that puts you in a performance stage, usually, you know, we as Aquarians um, might not be so, you know, we might not want to be so much in the public, but now our fifth house, which brings those Leo qualities of, oh, I'm the best, and or I want applause for my intelligence. And you will receive very likely this applause for your intelligence, for your brilliance, some brilliant ideas that come to you suddenly to implement creatively in your business fifth houses. If you have your own business that you've created with your own ideas, so you can implement something innovative there, you can get excited to grow it there as well, possibility. You can allow, um, you can uh, take a business to the next level with Raku, make it more technologically advanced or just something unique that you bring out of yourself, that you give birth to. Or if you give birth to a child, fifth house is children. You can give birth to children that are quite different, unique, uh, charismatic, a uh, bit crazy, <laughs> I mean, a bit rebellious maybe, Raku can have this energy, the North Node, hungry for life, but it can give pregnancies, you know, with Raku can even give twins and stuff, uh, if you're, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, we'll see <laughs> if I have twins by the end of 2021, <laughs> and because it's in Gemini, Gemini is the twins, um, but it can make you more fertile to create something, you know, fifth house is creation, whether it's a child, whether it's a book you can create and Gemini rules writing. So some of you might be writing a book, something that you create. Some of you might be making a new website. Some of you might be making a new business, Gemini rules sales and, uh, uh, online marketing and stuff, but some new creation in those lines, some new creation of your mind as well, Gemini, that can happen. Uh, and fascination. And if you're married already, this can make you experiment more. Rahu is experimental. Kind of even break taboos in uh, fifth house rules, romantic and sex life. Uh, so some of you might, despite of being married, look outside, you know, that can, Rahu doesn't care about rules, what is moral, what is not. It just wants to have fun. It wants to, when it's in the fifth house, it wants to feel in love, alive. And it will grasp at anything. Again, Rahu is not moral. It can grasp at anything to feel like that, even if it's like the younger, you know, younger girlfriend or if you're married or another guy from... So just to warn you, this is a possibility. But another way you can use it if you're in a good marriage is to revive the love life, the sex life, to be more experimental in your sex life. Oh, I have to check when... Rahu was in 19 years ago. What happened to you 19 years ago when Rahu was in your 18, 19 years ago in your fifth house? You can return the the rewind and think about it and see. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> what happened 19 years ago? Oh. <laughs> uh, good. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, you can, you know, you can date more, definitely. With Rahu in the fifth house, so you can have more online dating as well. Rahu means rules, new technologies. But usually partners, uh, usually romantic interests that are very different than what you've normally been with. And you can renew this romantic things with more kinky sex, for example, because sixth house rules um, sex, sex pleasures as well. You can have more interest in that, more be more... Uh, unhinged there, let's say, almost like you're performing, you're riding your partner and you're like putting on wigs and you know, whatever, but you spice it up for sure. You do some taboo things you don't do other times that can revive a existing relationship already or just explore together some 
Find new fun things to do with your romantic partner to revive the love life because Rahu is to experiment, to try new such things. And find new hobbies to connect you to life, basically, to the flow of life. You will do all of this. Creative projects. And if you're a creative person, you might use new kind of, uh, you, you might, uh, your creativity might become, might be influenced by other cultures now, might be influenced by uh, other uh kind of foreign elements, kind of quite progressive, quirky. Your style can become quite quirky. Your creative style, your intelligence can become quite brilliant, kind of. And as I said, also, fifth house is um, fame. Uh, if you want to be an actor or whatever, maybe now you can receive some fame, definitely. Rahu gives the material manifestation of that house. And, you know, being in the center stage, so... Here I come. <laughs> I'll be, uh, you know, <laughs> hoping for my world fame, whatever. And as I said, it's, uh, yeah, you can modernize the business, Rahu, make it incorporate more progressive elements if the business is your own baby and so on. You can manifest, say, uh, exhibition or you can manifest, you can creatively, you can just flow with new ideas. But then we always have to remember that the fifth, the, the opposite is Ketu. And Ketu is where we let go of things, where we detach, where we lose something. And it's passing through our 11th house. The 11th house is a social house, network. You can feel disconnected from your network. Some friends can leave your life. You can feel even apathetic, like, uh, I don't want to connect. Like, I don't want to be present in too much in social media. I don't want to be present. You kind of almost want to become more exclusive. Fifth house is about exclusivity, where Rahu is. Uh, while the uh, 11th house is to be available to others and stuff. So if you want to make your brand more exclusive, now it's the time. Especially using your own face. Anything will succeed this life for your Aquarius because the houses that are activated is the first and the fifth, which is the self houses. Put yourself on your product. Put your own imprint on whatever you want to do as a personality rather than some kind of a, you know, oh, company, no name, no face. Or no, it's like use your face. You are the central product <laughs> or things that you want to start for the next year, you know. But um, you can disconnect from this 11th house and that can indicate that uh, your friends might disperse or social group might disperse or your more populistic appeal might disperse and become more exclusive because the 5th house is more activated, like you become someone more exclusive rather than more popular, populist. You might even, the highest manifestation of Ketu is to, wherever it's passing, is to adopt an attitude of a witness. And the 11th house is social changes that are happening. So, you know, everyone's going crazy currently about the world and politics and whatnot in 2021 as well. 11th house is the economy, the economy system, the markets. All those things are going to go crazy, by the way. Just giving you 2021's financially there might be a financial reset in the next two years like politically will be crazy show you know uh it's like the whole the whole ruling system is changing the whole political system is changing and you play a big role in that but funny enough because your 11th house is with ketu um uh, 11th house has the qualities of aquarius by the way but when it comes to what's currently happening in the world you would You'd be building your own thing, but you don't like sit with the popcorn and become like detached and watch the circus around. You kind of will withdraw yourself and you might even withdraw yourself for being politically active or expressing your opinions of how society should be and what it is because you're building your own thing there. So the schedule there, the best approach is... Uh, otherwise you can alienate a lot of people from your life like a larger circle of friends or acquaintances or followers or clients you know and so you just accept the role of the witness it's a very spiritual position Ketu uh, you have to approach it spiritually don't get involved it's a passive position don't get involved with political kind of stuff you know of any sort don't uh, with people fighting what is the right 11th house rules, like social systems and stuff like that. What is the right one? You're building your own thing just with your own example. Don't get 
you know, too messed up in, uh, just more observe. And because you're building your own stuff here and, and with Raku in the fifth house, uh, your own brand, so to speak, or your own creative intelligence, your own unique, very unique intelligence. Uh, so you might disconnect from certain political beliefs you had before 11th house, you know, social beliefs. You might discon uh, disconnect yourself from the almost like... Uh, fanatic <laughs> beliefs of, uh, of what that are happening around the social uh, the social organism the social body and observe because you observe because you know that you end up leading the new trends <laughs> eventually <laughs> you, you you don't get involved in the arguments there you just you just become the leader and the trendsetter. And the 11th house, uh, Ketu indicates that you can lose certain friends, especially friends that are more materialistic and stuff, but you can gain friends that are more Ketu in nature, that are more spiritual. Like you can become a member of online social groups that are more spiritual, that are more psychological, that are more... Uh, that are connected to values that are not so material, so to speak, as well. Um, you can build still a following or you can build like a network, but with Ketu-like people. And again, those Ketu people are definitely more, uh, let's say, usually eccentric. <laughs> uh, and 11th house is uh, the house of gains and earnings. Ketu doesn't tend to diminish those so much. I haven't noticed that, but Ketu tends to make you a bit dis disinterested towards that, especially 11th house rules like getting a salary. And you might kind of lose even interest towards getting a salary and you might focus on kind of more fifth house here, which is Rahu, is on um, speculative gains and you can have certain speculative gains with Rahu in the fifth house, maybe betting on creating your own business, getting betting on rather than relying on salary, the 11th house or on support from the government, 11th house, on social, uh, you know, 11th house is also kind of like uh, universal income or whatever if it's introduced, but you're like, no, I want to do something unique creatively and profit through something unique creatively that is not dependent on the, um, you know, on a salary, for example. Uh, and with Ketu in the tw in the 11th house, another thing that can happen is the elder sibling. You can disconnect a little bit from them sometimes. That's another thing. You can disconnect from your uh, long-term goals. Uh, not long-term goals. It can't be that. Um, but like the competition type of mentality. Um, while you are absorbed in creating something unique here in this fifth house. Um, and you can get disconnected of what do other people think of me? What do other people think of my creations? You'd be like, I don't care. Like I'm, you know, Ketu is like, mm, meh, I'm apathetic. Uh, and that's the right thing. Or you can, if you rely too much on what others think of you, your friends or your clients or your audience or whoever you're bringing the product to, you can get quite disappointed. Because Ketu's ultimate way to approach it is no expectations. Don't have expectations, open things, blank. And, and then you can have great response. But just focus here on this Rahu, creating the most unique, the most, um, you know, uh, brilliant type of creative thing that you're doing uh, or project or whatever. And um, detach for a little bit from this kind of more business side side of you know Ketu like trying to please what others want and trying to act according to what the group wants and also it can make you that you become unique and stand out from others because you no longer want to be part of the crowd and do what the crowd wants you're like you know I'm gonna stand out here like the like the superstar that I am I'm gonna showcase my brilliance and I'm gonna showcase my talents and gifts but, uh, and of course it wants applauses, but you're not going to care so much 
uh, and the fame can come with Rahu in the fifth house, like we said, but you're not going to care so much what every single person thinks. You, if, if you're taking too much, like they're telling you, oh, you should do this, that, that. No, you have to follow your own creative, unique vision rather than just constantly get feedback from others and try to please everyone. And then you'll receive the applause. Just, just be a bit, kind of a bit more selfish, basically, in whatever you want to do. Ah, okay, now let's go to Mercury retrograde periods. Mercury retrograde period. Oh yeah, the uh, Raku in the fifth house can also indicate more passion uh, into for literature, more passion for uh, art, drama. You can discover like going to movies. I don't know if people can do that, like theater and stuff. But if in those careers that involve performance of some sort uh, or creativity um, you can or you can have suddenly a sudden passion for drama you know to, to, to play in drama of some sort <laughs> just telling you for possibilities okay now let's go to mercury retrograde periods mercury is going to be retrograde in your first fifth and ninth houses all those houses represent the self again the self dharma houses so this whole year, Aquarius, is dharmic year for you. It's the opposite of karmic. Karmic was 2029, 2019, 2020, when Saturn was transiting your 12th house. Dharmic is the opposite of karmic. Karmic is paying off, you know, seeing results of your previous actions. Dharmic is very future-oriented. It's the universe aligning you to your path that is, brings you most joy and inspiration finding who you truly are, what your soul truly wants, and acting on those. The Dharmic houses are the most inspirational houses. The first, the fifth, and the ninth, they're all connected to the fire within. So you're lightening this fire within. It's you as well. You standing out independent. You standing out with your own creative ideas. You standing out with new beginnings. You standing out in a healthier body, for example. You standing out with your beliefs. You st it's And your connection to higher power tends to be very strong. You feel like you're aligned, like your actions align to what the higher power wants from you. Well, God's will and your will. The, these are the houses of will. And somehow you align your will to divine will. Hopefully all of us will do that. But you, you're coming closer to understand divine will. And these are the houses where God inspires you. Or your higher self, you know, inspires you in the right direction. So there'll be a lot of inspiration, guys. And there'll be a lot of working on who you are. And you standing out rather than relying on others. We as Aquarians, we always tend to need our crowd or whatever. But this time the universe says, no, you you need to, you know, become more like the fire signs. <laughs> you know, like Aries, Leo, a little bit more of a selfishness. But you need to showcase your brilliance. And rather than rely on the audience, you know. So let's see. Then Mercury goes retrograde first in our sign in Aquarius. From January, uh, from the last day of January, that's January uh, January 30th to February 20th. So the first 20 days of February, Mercury goes retrograde in Aquarius from 11 degrees to 26 degrees. 11 to 26 degrees. Uh, that means if your sun, moon or ascendant is there, you will be asked to work. And for all Aquarius, though, all Aquarius will feel Mercury retrograde, but those degrees, they'll feel it more intensely. You'd have some very mercurial work to do then. Revise, edit, uh, redo things over and over. Be careful with devices, phones, miscommunications, problems in communications from before that you didn't solve who have to be fixed. You know, uh, be careful with passwords and stuff like that, with numbers. And if you've made any mistakes in the past, now you'll fix them during this retrograde period. But usually I had Mercury retrograde like seven years ago, something like or six approximately. I'm not sure when it was exactly, but I remember very clearly when it was in Aquarius again, I think I was putting finishing touches and editing my first course. So I've been working on it before. Mercury retrograde is like, um, it's when you, you know, 
fix it, edit it. So some of you might have to do those things, completing something, redoing some project that comes from the past to make it better, re-examining also sometimes if it's your son in those degrees, your career relationships with important males, uh, or doing certain project in career that requires a lot of your Mercury skills, talking, speaking, communication, uh, intelligence. Uh, but usually Mercury requires three times more skills and gives three times more lasting results by the time it turns direct, so from the end of February. It's very good for business as well, Mercury retrograde, because you do a lot of corrections, fix that improve the business plan, the strategy somehow. You might, some of you that might be connected to taxes because Mercury rules the eighth house for you that you're reevaluating, fixing or redoing something with taxes, re-examining them, you know, to, to do something over again. And fifth house, it might have to do with uh, increased needs to help a child with skills, with communication, focus, focus, presence there, or with some creative project that you are redoing that your uh, creative project is the fifth house. So if you have your own business, it's your own business that you're fixing, redoing, putting final touches there. Also, Mercury brings things from the past you are not aware about that come back. Uh, so certain things, unsaid things come to be said now and it escalates. You can no longer hide those things or, you know, and usually because it's in your first house, you'd be the one saying those things. But some projects might slow down while Mercury is retrograde. So this is the most important retrograde period for all Aquarius uh, in the February one, because it's in our sign. So all those Mercury retrograde things, you'll be doing them and feeling them the strongest then. Um, they can be some old friends or acquaintances that appear, Mercury uh, starting to talk with a romantic partner about things that bother you to try to fix them. Uh, or to improve them or sometimes it might be I can give you an example when Mercury went retrograde over my son um, I broke up a business partnership business, business collaboration or employee because I found out things they were doing that kind of shocked me and there was a crisis situation and a crisis situation I had to learn all the administrative tasks she was doing so it required me this Mercury retrograde to, to do a lot of Mercury work that I don't usually do thinking, uh, organizing, scheduling you know and uh, it turned out fantastic because I spared myself you know so much expenses and uh, it, it was great so it will be frustrating maybe because you have to do something differently. You have to have plan B and C. When it comes to travels, you might have to reorganize or uh, do something differently with the business. You have to use a lot of your skills, replan, reschedule meetings and stuff. But the final result can be way better. The silver lining you see by the time Mercury is direct. So maybe towards March. Okay, then Mercury goes retrograde in your fifth house and that's basically in most of June till the 22nd of June. Where is it? Uh, from May 29th till June 22nd. So most of June, basically. So June from the end of May and the first 22 days of uh, June, you have Mercury retrograde in the fifth house together with Rahu. So now the fifth house is... Let's start with romantic matters. You might be talking, might have to have some conversations about where the romantic life is going in your relationships. Maybe are you having enough fun? How can you do it differently? Maybe is there enough so sexual connection? Do you feel excited around your partner? You're asking yourself such questions. You're rethinking relationships uh, romantically, the fun part of them, you know. Um, some things can come about romantic relationships that you are not aware about that you have to discuss a little bit of a crisis can happen but I think it's quite good because Neptune is Mercury is doing a lot of good aspects from there to Jupiter trying to Saturn so I think the final outcome will be quite good you can actually have a more better more fun romantic final result as well and in, in extreme cases, it can mean that you actually reevaluate a romantic relationship. Sometimes it can mean a romantic partner from the past comes back, someone you don't have a closure with. Uh, you hear back from someone that you've broken up with, or maybe someone from way back, from your school years, that they reconnect with you. 
so you can see them from a different perspective and take them off the pedestal or reconnect maybe with them. Um, maybe you can just talk about good old times with friends and just find yourself reminiscing more, thinking more about such things. You can revive an old hobby or passion of yours. Maybe you stopped trekking. Maybe you loved doing doll dresses as a child. So now you decide, oh, maybe I can start doing clothes. Or maybe I can give you an example when Mercury retro went retrograde in my fifth house a few years ago uh, from my Aquarius Ascendant. I remember that I suddenly was quite, like it's, I received quite a few emails that my website that I've had for two years, they said like, it's hard to navigate. I can't find those products. And it's always been the same, but suddenly I became very aware of the malfunctions there since fifth house is my baby, my business, you know, something I've created. So I said, so in a crisis mode, I was like, okay, I have to fix it. And that's when I called a, a, a designer and we created a new website. We started it on Mercury Retrograde, actually, because I said, okay, it needs to be improved. That's what Mercury Retrograde, take something that exists, that you've created, make it better. It took me 10 months to complete the website. And that's the new website. That's the website that I currently have. But something very good came out of that. Even if you're frustrated for a little bit, that's some, something you've created, uh, whether it's a piece of art, whether it's a piece of software, whether it's a piece of... Uh, a business that you've done, you you want to perfect it, to fix something there. You know, that's what Mercury can trigger. Also, it can indicate that your child, uh, and by the way, that Mercury is in its own sign. So again, very good. And it's enhanced by Raku. It can trigger pregnancies. Ha. Huh. <laughs> okay. It manifests the house it is and Jupiter is trining it. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. It can trigger... Uh, so this whole May and June, while well, Mercury is there, even in, into the middle of July, very all those fifth house matters, uh, you're very focused on them, you talk about them, you think about them, you, uh, uh, you plan them, you can be planning some parties, you can be planning some fun activities, you can be focused on um, basically focus on relearning how to have fun or, or on uh, fun activities that are mercurial, reading, um, uh, educational, um, communication, writing something. You might be editing a book, your own creation. You might be editing videos, your own creation. You might be, you know, all of those things are possibilities. Um, I think, though, that it's quite good Mercury retrograde for us. You know, it's trining planets in Aquarius, so you can reconnect with friends, Mercury rules friends, that you can have fun with, that you haven't seen for a while. You can go and do fun things you haven't done in a while. Revisit them uh, as well. Uh, children, we talked about that. Okay, your child might be needing some help with educational matters or more conversation or for you to change your approach and to see the relationship or your approach at teaching your child or your approach at connecting with your child from a different point of view. Uh, some conversations with your child or loved one that we talked about can happen as well. Then Mercury goes retrograde at Libra. And that's most of October, from September 27th till uh, October the 18th. And <clears throat> it will be there with Mars this whole period. So basically, I would say that Mercury is in Libra most of September, all of October, and a little bit of no actually till November, a, a part of November. So for a couple of months, you know, from the middle of, yeah, middle of. September. So all this period, Mars is all the time here. So September, October, a period Mars is in Libra and Mercury is retrograde there, especially from, you know, especially most of October in your ninth house. Now that's another house of self, of uh, connection to inspiration, to higher power. Um, again, it's making trines to our planet. So it's, I think it's going to be very supportive. Some of you might be editing or uh, brushing up or uh, you having to use three times more focus mentally on some teaching project, Mercury. Some of you might be revisiting um, 
old places in foreign countries they haven't been for a while or finally able to take some trip that has been planned before to come back to it. There can be some complications with travels if it's a new plan. So always be prepared for, you know, uh, plan B, C. You have to be flexible if you're traveling during this Mercury retrograde in your ninth house. There can be the need if you're trying to legalize yourself in certain legalization papers, documents you might have to review to fix. There might be if you've applied for legal citizenship in a different country, this can be the time when you have to provide extra documents or appear for an interview or kind of, or if you've done it already, you might finally get the result for that. This can be when your high education is ninth house, when you can, some of you might rethink what is your major? What do you want to study? And maybe decide to study something else. Some of you might be thinking about um, if you're an import, export of any sort, it's increased, it's increased, maybe delayed certain business deals, but because they have to be redone, something has to be fixed there. Uh, and also if it's projects about teaching, lecturing, uh, studies, conferences of any sort, they might get delayed, but they need to be perfected to be made better. And then when Mercury starts moving direct from October 18th, usually you can present them or, you know, everything goes according to plan. You can rethink some opinions, some worldviews there as well. But obviously there is a lot of focus here on, um, for a couple of months, on anything connected with teaching, with uh, traveling to foreign countries, with wisdom, uh, and a lot of activity. Mars is also then Mars is helping your planets in Aquarius. I think it's going to be quite good month, despite of the Mercury retrograde. Um, Mars allows you to forge forward with your actions in a harmonious well in September and October. Uh, uh, it's kind of helping you achieve your goals, basically. Let me just see. All right. <sighs> okay. Uh, and then we're going to have Saturn invisible. Saturn is your planet. Whenever it goes invisible, you kind of withdraw from the world a little bit. And the invisibility happens from January the 6th till February 26th. So... Maybe it's time to take a break in this time so you can renew your energies and you, you, you can be reborn again when Saturn becomes visible from February 26th. Your will force, your uh, willpower and energy to manifest on the external will come back again and even physical strength and more health comes back. So even sometimes when your planet becomes invisible, it can be time, time of a little bit of a weakened health. Uh, so Saturn is in, becomes visible February 26th. So the first couple of months, it is most of the time invisible. And Saturn, uh, and then you start being able to act forward, you know. But Saturn becomes invisible at 3 degrees Aquarius. And Venus also becomes invisible at 2-3 degrees in Aquarius. Uh, and these degrees, you have to be careful. Sun, moon, or ascendant at three degrees. I would say one, two, three, four, five degrees. The first five degrees of Aquarius. So I'm part of those people. So basically born from the 20th to the 25th of January. Uh, you have to be a bit more cautious. Two planets disappear in your degrees, Saturn and Jupiter. On the negative side, when Saturn disappears on those degrees, whether it's your sun there or moon or ascendant, something can end in your life. Um, the good side is it can be some responsibility that can end. It might be some old figure that leaves the world. Saturn is grandparents or older people. It might be, if you're only those degrees, it might be that you end some responsibility and duty or some work career. Saturn is work or some project. The good things about the planet that disappear, it can also weaken the health when Saturn disappears if you're the first five degrees of Aquarius. So you have to be careful health or, you know, your, um, something can end in your life. Okay. Let's say it this way. And, but the good thing is it means that they, they can be good endings. Like you can complete something, some responsibility, some duty and let go of it. And there are other types of endings that are more difficult. 
And then Saturn becomes visible at 9 degrees Aquarius. So if you have Sun, Moon, or Ascendant 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 degrees, so if Saturn is being born there, there will be the birth of a new... I'm not going to give you days, just look at the degrees. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, even to 12. Saturn becoming visible in those degrees from February 26. The birth of new responsibilities, the birth of new beginning in your life. Uh, the birth of new ideas, strengthening yourself. And Venus becomes invisible from February 20. Becomes invisible in uh, at 2 degrees Aquarius. So again, those first 5 degrees. They can be the end for some of a illusion thing, of a romantic relationship, of a relationship with a female, or some woman leaving your life, or the end of some Venus project, you know, it, Venus Project is connected to uh, designing, decorating, beauty, uh, luxury stuff. So, and it also, it can mean when Venus, uh, it can mean just, just that you complete such a thing, you know, it doesn't, and it gives you its results. A planet becoming, before it becomes invisible, it gives you its results. So it can be great, even for the Saturn, uh, that in the first five degrees that we talk, when it becomes invisible at the start of January, even that can give you great results of if you've been doing hard work on something before it becomes invisible. Okay, here's the results. Um, and then Venus becomes vis it's invisible from uh, becomes visible at our four in our fourth house in Aquarius from April twenty first, which means that for us as an Aquarians. Uh, so not only the first degrees, I would say when Venus becomes visible, the Aquarius have to be generally more careful about, you know, they all generally, especially the first five degrees, but something Venusian can disappear in their life. Uh, but also it can mean that something Venusian gives them the, the end product. Uh, and when Venus appears, it will appear in our fourth house collectively as Aquarius. So they can be the birth of Venus is something beautiful. So they can be, and that's from April 21st onwards, approximately a few weeks before or after. A new home can be born for some of you, a new beautiful environment, a new family member, something with the family, something good with the life of your mother, improved relationship there, improved circumstances for your mother, improved family life, a new place to live, relocation, improved home, you know, all of those things, uh, improved sense of well-being emotionally. And then Jupiter disappears, you know, this year. So 2020 was the year of retrogrades. All the planets were going retrograde. 2021 is the year of planets starting a new cycle, disappearing and appearing, visibility. This ancient astrology, you're not going to get it anywhere from any other astrologer uh, in the world. So, visible, Jupiter becomes visible on February 22nd. Let me see when it becomes invisible, though. Jupiter becomes invisible from January 16th at 6 degrees Aquarius. Again, Aquarius, <laughs> you know, everything is becoming visible, invisible in Aquarius. And Saturn and Jupiter are becoming visible in Aquarius again. But 6 degrees in Aquarius, so born fourth. So, Aquarius... First, something Jupiterian can end in your life in January. So, January, Saturn, something Saturnian ends, something Jupiterian ends. Um, so, that can be some source of income that ends. Jupiter is abundance, wealth rules the second house, the 11th house. It can be the end. And you can see the results of that or some project, you know, that you can reap the financial rewards of it and it ends around that time. It can be the disappearance of some Jupiter people from your life. Jupiter means benefactors. Jupiter means um, someone that you consider like your teacher, be, uh, you know, benevolent people that you really, you know, that you felt like a spiritual connection with. Uh, and then Jupiter appears at 16 degrees of Aquarius uh, in, let me see, on February 22nd. 
16 degrees of Aquarius and it comes back renewed with new ideas. So again, it appears in Aquarius. So even though you have to withdraw for a little bit, you see this January, February, it's about retreating. And from the end of February, uh, Jupiter appears February 22nd, Saturn February 26th. That's when you start feeling strength aquas. From the 22nd onwards, full force forward, Aquarians, you know, February 22nd, 26th, then Saturn becomes visible. Mercury becomes visible um, in Aquarius again. <laughs> I'll speak about Mercury also visibility in a bit. In Aquarius on the 20th of February at 10 degrees till March at 23 degrees in Aquarius. So you give birth of new ideas then. February is a very strong month for you. Uh, from the end, from the, the last 10 days of February. Till then, you might have felt a bit drained because Mercury was invisible in your sign, v Jupiter and Saturn. And then something amazing is born with Jupiter becoming visible around 16 degrees in Aquarius, 22nd. It means new opportunity gives born, give, is born in your life if you're a Sun, Moon or Ascendant around 16 degrees. So I can say from 13 till 19 degrees in Aquarius. Wow, it's like... You're on fire, positive opportunities, growth that comes, uh, opportunities even to travel, to study, some new ideas are coming to you. Um, and Mercury becoming visible from the 20th of February in your sign uh, from around 20th. No, it's not on the 20th of February. Sorry, Mercury becomes visible. First in January 8th till January 31st in Aquarius at one degree Aquarius. So while Saturn and Venus are becoming invisible around those degrees, Mercury is becoming visible. So in January, you best to do mercurial things, all of your Aquarius. Try not to do Venusian things too much like dating, romance, Venus is invisible in your sign, Saturnian things uh, like building something from scratch already or uh, you know but do mercurial things writing speaking business uh sales marketing media all of those things communications of any sorts uh presenting ideas january fantastic then mercury becomes invisible and comes visible again from february the 10th Okay, so I was correct. From February 20th, when Saturn and Jupiter become visible. So you'll be so strong from the last 10 days in February. Uh, at 10 degrees, it becomes visible in Aquarius again. <laughs> it's like, so again, from then you start everything. I, I, I mean like Saturn visible, Jupiter visible, Mercury visible in your sign. Something beautiful will get born, will appear in your life. Venus, you know, uh, Saturn, they can, Jupiter can bring new opportunities, Mercury, something, opportunities to write, to speak, to for better business, better sales for the market as well, um, st learning, studying, traveling opportunities, Saturn, um, to build something, new responsibilities that come, and so on. Woo, so much happening. I mean, so much happening for Aquarius. Um, then Venus is in Aquarius the whole February, so it's keeping the front, even though it disappears in January and it's invisible, but it's kind of helping being in February, being, uh, being in Aquarius in February. So it makes you more attractive, more agreeable, uh, despite, uh, the first 20 days, all the planets being invisible, Saturn, Mercury, and Jupiter in Aquarius. So Venus will make you flow through it. Maybe take a break when planets are invisible. Can you go to Hawaii? Come and join me to Hawaii. <laughs> I'm, I'm planning to be in February in Hawaii, you know, anywhere from January. So it's like, take a break when there's so many invisible planets in your life. You need to be recharged. Like the planets are going to get recharged to the sun. That's what you need to do January and February till the, till around the first 15 days of February. Then the second part of February, you are on fire, starting new things and blah, blah, and new things appearing in your life. Um, then let's see Mars when it becomes invisible. Mars becomes invisible, so it disappears in your seventh house in July. July the 14th, but it means some partnership of yours can end or you can see the results of some partnerships and the completion of it. Uh, so that's 
uh, some contract or agreement can end. Uh, but Mars will be invisible quite a few months till the end of the year. And Mars rules your career, so it can kind of withdraw a little bit from career for those months from the middle of July to December. But then December it is reborn again in your house of career, in its own sign, in Scorpio, at 22 degrees. So it can give the birth of new projects at career, more competitive ones, new bosses can appear. Uh, hopefully it's not like new, uh, like a new argument with authority figures, but usually it is to take charge, to initiate something in your career that you feel recharged and ready to do it. Um, so you feel your module, especially in achievement, worldly achievement and recognition and social status come back from December the 1st. Um, all right. And now last but not least is sat the, the outer planets. Let's see who are they going to affect. Well, Pluto and Neptune are not making any aspect to Aquarius. Not for long, because from 2024 or 5, Pluto's going to come in Aquarius. So <laughs> then we're going to have a party, a <laughs> 20-year party. But um, for now, Pluto and Uranus, uh, Pluto and Neptune are not affecting any planets in Aquarius. But I don't know, if you have Pisces moon, Neptune might be transiting your moon. But still not Aquarius. Uranus though, Uranus is making a party. Uranus is affecting especially strongly everyone who has their sun, moon, or ascendant from 10 to 15 degrees in Aquarius. Actually, till April the 1st, from 5 to 10 degrees, people feel it, but they've been feeling it already in 2020. They've had Uranus pass there. So if your ascendant sun or moon is from 5 to 10 degrees, you're going to have Uranus only till April. And then it's gone. So sudden changes out of the blue developments, disruptive circumstances, especially through home, personal, you know, personal life changes that Uranus from the fourth brings or sudden changes of career. If your sun is from five to 10, personal life, the moon. But then those who have their sun, moon or ascendant in Aquarius from 10 degrees to 15 degrees, Uranus will square them from uh, the will square them from August, uh, from, sorry, from April till the end of the year and part of 20, until April 2022. So from April 21 to April 22, 10 to 15 degrees in Aquarius, feel it the most, but 5 to 15 degrees, let's say, everyone that gets affected from Uranus, this means people born from the 26th of January, approximately, till the 4th of February. Well, they're having you in a square, but by the way, Saturn is uh, squaring, is conjunct those degrees as well. So those people, 26th of January to 3rd, 4th of February, they're having both Saturn conjunct and Uranus square. So the biggest changes will come for them this year. And I talked to you about Saturn, what it can mean, but now we'll add on Uranus as well. Uranus can bring sudden changes. Um, Uranus can bring when it squares Sun, Moon or Ascendant uh, extra circumstances that are a bit more chaotic but exciting and Uranus can indicate that you're, you, you really need to innovate because Saturn needs to do it by the rule, by the book conjuncting your Sun, Moon or Ascendant and Uranus says but at the same time you have to be very flexible, adapt very quickly because Things will be moving faster, actually, than you expect. The changes that come are faster. So if it's your Sunday, often it means from 6 to 15 degrees. It can mean that this year you can change your career in a big way. You know, you can drop one kind of career, start another one. An important man can disappear in, from your life and a new one appear. Uh, important male role or your husband, for example, might be going through some challenges, which indicates that, He's doing something new in his life. Or if it's your moon or ascendant, it's the relationships that are under stress. Emotionally with the moon, especially with the moon, it can mean change of place of living. If your moon is 5 to 15 degrees, 6 to, okay, 5 to 15 degrees in Aquarius. Change of living, place of living, big change in family circumstance of some sort. With women, relationships with women, with the life of the mother emotional changes, hormonal changes, uh, and kind of stresses, but you plow through, don't worry. 
uh, and innovations and excitement, you know. Uh, Uranus can bring a lot of excitement and Uranus is our planet, guys. So it's it's almost like, uh, like we're making those. It's because of us, because we want. Uranus is our other planet. So those of you who are those degrees can feel a little bit kind of bipolar at the moment. Saturn wants you, you know, Saturn demands you to do things by the book. Uranus tells you, go crazy, act unexpectedly, you know, try new things. Saturn says, stay to the, you know, stick to the tried and test it. Do your responsibilities. Uranus says, be free. So you have to do both if you're those degrees. You have to do your responsibilities, Saturn, and you have to find time to do something crazy and wild. Otherwise, you might just erupt like a volcano. And you have to, uh, as I said, if it's your son, usually it's something to do with your career and change. Maybe you need to uh, rebuild or restructure it while incorporating new technologies, Uranus, or um, take more responsibilities while uh, adapting your career to be more freelancing, where you're more independent, Uranus, where you're not tied nine to five somehow. Some changes will start. If it's your ascendant and moon relationships, the ascendant axis is the relationship axis, your appearance as well. Um, if you're in a relationship that is not stable already, that is not satisfying, it's not going to survive it unless some huge changes happen, like relocation, like uh, changes of family members, you know, uh, a big uh, change in the relationship. And maybe it's also you need to give more space to each other. When Saturn is on your ascendant, those degrees, Uranus is squaring it. Um, give a space to each other. Does it mean you can't have stable relationship? Well, it can have more unique and different relationships. Maybe because you have too many responsibilities, it can mean that you can't constantly see a relationship that you want to start, a new one. Maybe it's kind of a bit disruptive on and off, or you have to travel to see each other. Or even if you're married in a happy marriage, you have too many responsibilities and you have to travel for business or something that happens that can put some disruption. I recently had Uranus square my ascendant and for me, did, we had a few stresses in my relationship, a couple of fights and Uranus was from the fourth house, but that was a time when we bought property. So it was stressful. It stressed our relationship. So new property, Uranus. Uh, we moved two times that year from Europe back and back and forth. So that can, could have put some pressure on our relationship as well, this moving the family. Uranus is to do something kind of, wow, uproot everything. But I mostly broke up relationship with business partners and I got new ones. So it's okay. <laughs> you know, don't be too scared uh, from those things. It's renewal. Uh, and stuff like that. Okay, so there you go. And, and I think you as Aquarians would like the spark of Uranus if you have those degrees 5 to 15, Sun, Moon or Ascendant because it connects you more with your true nature. It's not just the Saturnian part that you'll be part of. Just like the oh, duties, responsibilities, you also connect to this wilder, more brilliant part. And I think some of you can create something really brilliant because you'll use your expertise and... Um, uh, old experience, Saturn, you'd be very consistent in your efforts, Saturn. You will be willing to fight to overcome all the difficulties, which also Saturn. While Uranus square means that you'll be spitting out new ideas and trying out new ways uh, and uh, looking at alternative solutions and uh, be, being willing to experiment. Just when it's the moon and the ascendant, there is a bit more stress on the personal relationship. Even with the sun, relationships with males and stuff that are a bit more tested. All right. So thank you so much. There you go. Your 2021, the most memorable year for many of you. Everything is happening <laughs> at once. Thank you so much, Aquarius. Stay strong. Let's, let's take the whole world to a new reality. <laughs>